Tell me what you say. Happy Monday, everybody. Yo, yo, yo. Hello. We're going to start weird things here in uh, just a minute. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you for joining us. It's May 9th. Oh, yeah. Yep. 22. Uh, 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 nueve de Mayo. That's right. Uh, cinco, that's right. Cinco de Nuevo. Ma, ma, mas, mas de Mayo. Live Mas de Mayo. <laughs> Live, Live Mas Mayo. Mas Mayo. I thought you guys hated Mayo. Yeah, but we love... That <laughs> of a bitch. We love uh, 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 Taco Bell, so the live moss part. Yeah, that's what we're mostly into. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll tolerate the word Mayo. Yeah. You Maybe. know, I, I, I like Taco Bell so much, but it's the fast food restaurant that disappoints me the most. Well, okay. I didn't know I that I feel that, that about possible. you, Bryce. <laughs> how, how on earth? <laughs> because they always screw up my order. I oh. always try to get something simple, something no lettuce, no sour cream, and they always screw it up. I don't get burritos anymore because you you ask them for no sour cream, they're gonna give you sour That's cream. Good. You Sorry. Know, like uh, uh, so your definition of something simple is something that requires a modification on every single order. I, it is a simple modification. It's the app. I'm I'm putting it in the the, the oh, computer for them. They don't care about that. <laughs> price. They don't I, care about that. I, it's a I'm bunch lucky. of words. <laughs> the one I go to, they were good. Like that was dangerous because I'd use that app and I'd be making like you know my crazy concoctions and yeah, do it. Thirty-seven tortilla strips. <laughs> a, a stern look. Thirty-seven, <laughs> not thirty-eight, not thirty-six. Some hot water with a little bit of cold water uh, added. This is yeah, the latest, the latest <laughs> chapter of Brian being a dickhead <laughs> at. Uh, I, uh, this was Summer not, Moon. It, that was a joke I made for you. <laughs> so I'm getting my coffee at Summer Moon, and Brian goes, uh, uh, "I'm like, hey, do you want anything?" And uh, he's like, "Oh, no, no, no." And then uh, I'm about to order. And he goes, oh, 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 um, <laughs> a hot water with just a little bit of cold water. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's not too hot. Yeah. Not an ice cube. No, 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 no. What? And I'm like, what I'm like, I no, like... there's no, I'm not, I'm not going to back down. And so I ordered him a hot water, a 12 ounce hot water with just a little bit of cold and water. And then he dunks on me by saying, and also, if you don't mind, as loud as he can, he draws in a breath and says, put a $5 tip on and that a $5, tab. Bob. <laughs> That's a hundred and twenty percent of what the actual bill was for a water. I, uh, Brian, I, like I like the fact that you feel like you have to invent these eccentricities. <laughs> it's a creative exercise. You're like, if I don't do this, people might think I'm normal. Uh, and, and meanwhile, Justin's like, see, he's the villain. He's the villain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now drink that water in front of me. <laughs> I did. It was, yes, it it was <laughs> chef's kiss. Perfect temperature. Not yeah. too hot, not too cool. I would describe it as comfy as um, you know, like what we're in right now, like a, like a room. Room temperature. Yeah. That's a great name. Yeah. It was warmer than that. Mayor. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's, let's get going. I got oh. I have a hard out. Oh, okay, okay, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, All right. Hey. Take it away, Andrew. In three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, buddies. Brian Brushwood. Yo, it's me, slightly above room temperature water brushwood. <laughs> and Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. My temperature is, I think, normal. Sizzling. Good. <laughs> so uh, the body is a wonderful thing. It is. Love. I love uh, my body. Uh, it is a wonderland, yeah. as scholars have <laughs> determined. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we've been learning more and more about how much bacteria in your body, helpful bacteria, plays a part. We've been doing 
uh, a lot of research now on like gut biota and like people actually, you know, you now it's it's common to like, oh, I'm gonna have this yogurt because it'll help my gut biota. And there's been research into some of the other places where bacteria is known to inhabit the mouth, you the know, mouth cavities and stuff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, you know, the surface of the skin. It's why we try to use sanitizers more. And that's about it. There's nothing else interesting. Uh, Where else? Uh, no. Uh, mm, no. Uh, uh, Brian. Uh, there might be a, uh, a, a portion of the scientific community that considers human beings to be a symbiote, uh, where upwards of 15 to 25 pounds of what you consider your body weight has nothing to do with you. It's external residents who live in a little little microbiome of their own talking where about where is this is this down the street from me brian yeah what, where uh, where no 15, uh, on a tree uh first of all wrap your mind around the fact that uh your body is a torus uh it's got it's got a tube that goes yeah. straight uh down Bro, yeah torus. wait a minute yeah no i'm a pisces though uh okay yeah. uh your yeah. your body is a donut okay okay uh, okay and uh, a bagel uh, yep. More of an eclair guy body. myself. Yeah, wait a minute. Is this like French? Can I get some French filled? stuff? All right, wrap your mind around this. Yeah. When you think you're swallowing food and it's going inside of you, yeah. it's still staying outside of you. What? Because there's How a tube this? that goes from your mouth. Nobody knows where it ends up. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> technically, it's never in you. And part of this inside outside of you has um a, a lot of uh, bacteria in it and 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 it turns out there's a lot of diseases that can uh, uh, allegedly affect your mood uh, the way you act um uh, not just diseases but you, hey look hey man we're talking about fecal bacteria we're talking about the biome uh, inside what? your belly Whoa, oh Brian. ending this conversation yeah, this is uh, a family uh, program one, gross you can't get an infection in your booty hole <laughs> it's, it's your a booty, booty hole. hole yeah uh yeah no i forwarded over uh you probably have the story in front of you andrew i i, I just saw it and i knew we had to talk about it on weird things so and there's I have a feeling there's entire... We probably would have cured cancer by now if it wasn't for the ick factor of a lot of elements of things in science and medicine. That there's like, oh, we could research this, and somebody's like, or not. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> like, like because it's like, you know, head, you know, the headline is, you know, fecal matter transplants are probably something you've heard before, and they, because they've been, you know, just... They need a better name. Just the better name, fecal matter trans or fecal transplants. It's just not L lower biome transplants. Yeah. Sounds, ooh, chef's kiss. Yeah. Only don't kiss. Yeah. Him. Watch your hands I would. First. I might. I might go with poop loop. <laughs> nah, you see, Follow your nose. Because one one sounds like human centipede. Yeah. The other sounds like oh, this sounds good, but like so. Uh, there's been research about fecal transplants, and that is basically tell, taking the fecal matter from one organism and putting it into the uh, the the bunghole, as the scientists call it, of another organism. And the reason you do this is you're transplanting the bacteria, because as we explained, it's bacteria in your body helps break things down, and it does a lot of different things uh, besides breaking it down, creating chemicals, can actually affect your overall immune system, etc. And we're just beginning to learn this. So they took some mice, and they took out of young mice, they took the technical term was poo, and they pulled it out of the young mice, and then they put it into the well, other mice. Old mice. Old mice. And they said the older mice, that it, it actually was able to reduce inflammation, that they had uh, basically you know, improved overall general health, that it appeared to reverse the process of aging. And when they took How long do mice live, poo, though? When they took old poo and put it at a young mice, yeah. the young mice then had inflammation and other issues, and so it Because you put aged. poop in there. <laughs> well, oh, it was, uh, hold knock on. it off. Dr. Bryce, <laughs> oh, out of order. Uh, right. uh, Bryce the dandy, uh, <laughs> please, uh, uh, bring yourself back to your carriage. The scholars are speaking. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so that's that, that's fascinating. And so the idea is that just literally introducing new bacteria uh, uh, can can significantly change the overall biome uh, uh, and 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 truly create a different reaction in the body. Uh, well, and, and specifically, uh, uh, bacteria from younger uh, 
donors <laughs> donors the donors yeah mm-hmm. I, I mean are, are we can have donation centers for yeah. this oh my god i mean if if, if, if we if have you s- can make 40 dollars a pop for a sperm donation mm-hmm. i mean uh you got to make like i don't know I, I don't know what high of a number of dollars you can make for another donation. i mean look, probably two dollars <laughs> if, if all these college athletes think that they're making money on name and likeness deals uh i'm just gonna tell you <laughs> find out what happens when when uh, silicon valley finds up they can they can put trevor lawrence's poop up their own i've got <laughs> yeah. i've got oh. authentic brett Favre fecal matter from 1981 oh yeah <laughs> there was Classic some research Bo jackson a while back. fecal matter <laughs> There was some research a while back into using younger blood, and I saw a study, and I don't know if it's really anything conclusive or not, but they talked about like young blood into older people can help that. But one of the things that's been researched now is actually just the process of donating blood if you're older, that actually donating blood on a regular basis can give you some of the benefits of that. It's mm. not so much that you're getting younger blood. It was just forcing your body to sort of just replenish its blood supply. Oh, that's so, interesting. So so yeah. you, you are manufacturing quite literally younger red blood cells because you got mm-hmm. you, you 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 flushed yeah so in one i saw that in one study where they just recommended like uh just donating gives you a lot of the benefits they thought which is oh it's the young blood like well maybe for some things i think it could still be but i think there were a lot of like oh yeah no it's just you know making your body go all right make some new blood what's the matter with this dark brown liquidy stuff it still moves it, it pretty much holds oxygen i mean uh, yeah, they, they say a, they say every a, six thousand miles but do they mean it a come on pabst can in here and some sawdust let's get rid of this. <laughs> skittles all right i try not to eat too much aluminum but sometimes yeah. sometimes you yeah. know you get the munchies you want to know what else is appetizing heading on over to patreon.com <laughs> slash weird things uh. Uh, where you can support this very, very show. We all get together on Mondays and we talk about news of the weird, science, and all sorts of fun stuff. But if we were not paid for it, we'd all stop doing it. Uh, Look, Justin, I feel like you're sugarcoating it. Let's get to the real truth. Go. We want the blood of young people and we need to buy poop. Uh, It's very expensive. We eventually intend to, uh, much like the uh, ship of Theseus, replace every living part of our body uh, with ship with, parts. With with <laughs> ship parts, we want to become gobots ship, or ship happens, <laughs> or Decepticons. Uh, and very 2022 of you, <laughs> <laughs> gobots or Decepticons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But we can only make it happen uh, with uh, your currency and, and none of that fake imaginary made up numbers like no, Bitcoin. Like like respect. No, we want we want hard, hard coin. Yeah, we, cer- and, we, we certainly don't want uh, exposure bucks. No, <laughs> because they uh, then they don't take those at the at the blood bank. They don't take them at the local uh, uh, 4-H. Anyway, Patreon. uh, uh, Patreon.com slash weird things. Where do you think they sell poop? Uh oh, Lowe's right. Well, <laughs> a new one. Poop. <laughs> Here's a, all right, all right. Poop. Built American tough. <laughs> when I'm out on the range, I ain't using horse poop. I'm using young, healthy human poop. Dennis Leary. You know, we used to make our own poop in this country. <laughs> Dong. <laughs> I'm talking red blooded, red, red, white, and blue. P O O P. Red wine. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Red so skeleton. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip us ahead here. Please, uh, for the love of God. Fast forward. For the button. love of God, can we Wrong, please but, move on to another yeah. subject? I so I got into this. I, a big, deep, deep, deep dive. I'm not going to get into all the details of it, but I've been fascinated by, like, uh, how do you, like, reading faster? Yeah. And remember remember a while ago, like, when the uh, the all these applications that were using uh, what was called RSVP, which is Rapid Serial Visual Perception, which was, like, flashing to one word at a time. Yes. Came out, and there was a company, Spritz was one of them. I think Spritz was probably one of the first ones out there. Do you remember that? Was yeah. that the one where it was it was going to make it? They were going to train you to read faster or, or feed you books in that uh, in that idea. Yeah, this yeah. is a really crappy one. Use I'd go to Spritz. But, this uh, one is. But but the point the point being that uh, uh, they would start off at a regular clip and then get faster and faster and faster and, and 
uh, much like listening to an audiobook at one and a half or two x speed or whatever, you 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 definitely had the uh, subjective sensation as and I still do that I am getting the full story. But but uh, since this is weird things, I I am guessing that that further research has shown that the comprehension is not as great. Well, it's complicated because actually what happened was. Uh, there was a, uh, Bryce, I'll send you a link to just like a, a simple JavaScript implementation that uses this. What happened was the thing came out and, uh, you know, Spritz came out and then everybody tried to, you know, emulate it, which was that flashing that one word at a time at you. And they, they used, they had their own thing where they called it a reticule where they said, oh, we point to the word at this point and we make one of the letters red and they had, you know, their version of this. And there's been a, ton of different things like somebody pointed out spreeder there's a bunch of plugins and stuff for this then some research came out which it was interesting because um the research sort of pointed out you'd, re you'd see these articles say like ah this turns out to be bunk or whatever because you said comprehension drops off the problem was a couple fold one is that in some of the research, they just had somebody look at it for 30 minutes, and that was the first and last time they tested it. So they never trained it. They weren't really testing people who were trained on trying to retain this, which can make a difference. Is that I found the more I use systems like this, but there's a better system than this one, uh, the better you know my retention is, right? And so you have to learn how to do it. So research came out that said, and some people like just dumped on it because there was a lot of claims like, oh, you know, do 2000 words per minute. And the brain's just not equipped to do that. But we do know the brain can handle a lot of information at once. And there's an article, there's research that came out and said, well, here's the problem. If you see it one word at a time, you can't go back. And that's really an important part of reading, which is, yes, that's true. But I can't go back in an audiobook or a movie or any other form in reality you just have to process it differently. You know, you just have to sort of change the sort of the buffer of what you're doing. So you I, see here- I, in our... I do, this uh, This is my gentlest of pushback. I will admit that that I've become not shy and I don't know if it's because I, I trust my ears less nowadays as I get older, but I am not shy. If, if I don't understand, like, is that a real word? Is that a foreign language? Is that a character name? What did I just hear? I'm not shy about jump, jumping back. But, All but, the time. But yeah, it, it is 100%. very challenging. 100%. So- I was curious about this because I played with it. I noticed the more I got into it, the kind of the better I was able to do it. But I'm like, man, this doesn't seem that good. This, there has to be a better way, though, because single word, because I realize you're still trying to construct stuff. And machine learning, we do a thing when you want to train a language model, you'll actually take, you can create tokens based on words, or you can take a couple words together, like Eiffel Tower, you know, or, you know, Mr. Brushwood. And you can combine these things together for frequency. And so machine learning models can be trained faster if they learn how to, let's say, use larger tokens. There have been a couple ones that have done that. And I'm like, I wonder, I'm like, man, I wonder if that would work for the brain, like in speed reading, instead of single word, if maybe there was like word, a couple word groupings. And so I did this, started trying to find as much any kind of research on it. And then I found a paper from 1982 where they actually compared regular reading, single word, and then chunking. Right. And chunking was by looking for clauses like, you know, uh, the banana, you know, uh, he, he smiled, things like that, by grouping things together into these sort of like clause groups. And this is 1982. So in order to test this, first they did single word and they use, I think there's a thing called a tachyoscope, which is flashes one word at a time, which is the word flashcard comes from, by the way, was flashing people things one at a time to try to see how oh, quickly wow. they can retain stuff, uh, like training fighter pilots to recognize enemy aircraft, et cetera. And in the study, they had to use a PDP-100 computer, which if you go like, that's an ancient computer to basically control stuff on a CRT. And they compared, uh, they, they did, they first is they measured the, ma the maximum rate that somebody could recognize something. And that was like 1200 milliseconds. I mean, like, like was uh, 1200 words per second was like the fastest rate somebody could recognize an individual word. So they they tested they tested 34 words per minute, 250 words per minute, and then 1,200 words per minute. Which, if you played with the software, you know that 1,200 is way too much, and they should have done something the 600 word per minute, but they didn't. That being said, at the 250 words per minute, they found that uh, that was a perfectly fine rate, and the retention levels were pretty much were on the same or around you know what somebody reading at 250 words per minute. And then they found that actually there was a high, they found that the chunking method was better 
the chunking method of was better than the single word, which is that, a kid in my life. Uh, and I suppose that tracks because they're, uh, they're all the way back to the 1990s, folks. Um, there was a, a bit of a debate debate between whether uh, phonics or whole word reading was better. Uh, and a, a whole word reading would be more analogous to a, a, a Chinese or Japanese characters, uh, maybe not kanji because that's phonetic, um, but, uh, but uh, whereas phonetics would be you could look at a pH and go, Pff, and that's why children, as they're learning to read, are like, you know, forget full or whatever. And then eventually you reach a point where you just, uh, at a core level, recognize the word forgetful and keep on going. So the thinking at the time was let's teach whole word uh, reading because eventually that's where we get to. And um, depending on what study you read, it, 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 it didn't do very well. And so uh, we're kind of back to phonics with children. But uh, it, it, it almost makes me, uh, it, it, it seems eventually we get to that, I get it, I get it, I get it. As an adult, you recognize patterns. Now, the downside of that, uh, tell me if you agree with this, Andrew, is that it, it opens us up to um, not noticing, uh, 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 for example, there's that, that email forward thing like, uh, I bet you can't believe you're reading this paragraph, even though every word is misspelled. That's because you know how to read well enough that you could tell like, oh, I get, I get it, I get it, I get it with each word. Um, is, is it a version of, of that that is being enhanced uh, with with blocks of words at a time instead of singular words? I I think that the part of the problem with a lot of these studies is that like, and people want to like, I, I'm coming from the skeptic world. We, we love to be able to say, ah, this is BS. We, I, I know the guys with the wisdom when we know this thing is fake or whatever. And also sometimes there's so much stupid stuff out there. It gets really hard to separate that. Like there was a thing in China where they were doing quantum, I'll get to get like doing quantum reading and you'd see these kids flashing these books by and the Chinese government's finally been shutting down these schools because it's complete and utter BS, you know, and you have, you know, there's on YouTube, I'll see this guy who's a speed reader, who's a complete liar. Like he's a complete, you see this guy and like, Oh, he read 300 pages in 10 minutes. He's a liar. Sorry, he's a liar. Right. Um, even, you know, the, the, the fastest speed we knew was Kim Peek, you know, who Rain Man was based on. And he didn't have much comprehension, but he could recall. He had no corpus column. His brain was one solid mass. Uh, when uh, they cor finally, uh, corpus uh, callosum, the, uh, the dividing line yeah, the, between the two? Uh, yeah, none of it. He just was basically, which is completely separate. There was the, so he had a weird brain. So I think that there's, there's good readers and poor readers. I think there's people who read more, and I think that you get used to that. To your point, is that I think over time, like if the best speed reading courses that I've seen, they teach you basically one. There's there's debate. Do you get rid of the sub vocalization or not? Because they say stop sub vocalizing, but some people say no. Sub vocalization probably helps with retention. That's not the problem. But I think that like the things where you just look at word groups is probably one of the ways you can do that. Where they talk about like a lot of reading methods where they have you move your finger across the page and what you want to do is kind of put it in between like three words or so. And basically that helps you sort of, you know, scan it faster. So, so uh, I, I don't know if this proposed line of thought is taking us too far afield too fast, but one of the topics we've talked about before is um, uh, there have been, for example, uh, for non-sighted people, there have been like uh, vests that you could wear with a 320 by 200 pixel set of, of physical uh nodules that would push up against you. There's been um, uh, soda pop, uh, electrified uh, things you could put on your tongue that will uh, take visual information from a camera and show it. And last time we really checked in on this was I think seven or eight years ago, where the general idea is much like without looking at any weather app or without knowing uh, uh, any visual cues from the outside world, if you've lived a long enough life and you've seen enough storms, you might at some subconscious level feel the barometric pr pressure drop or you, like an old person will say, oh, storm's coming, I feel it in my knee or whatever. And the thinking was, what if somebody was strapped into one of these vests, wore it all day and it was about corn futures or whatever. And then uh, uh, at a subconscious level, you would feel the beeps and bops all up and down your chest and you would think, I think corn futures are about to drop. And um, uh, I, 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 I've not since followed up on that story, but since we're talking about a story about reading, 
there is uh, individual words, like for example, wind and wind, it is impossible to know which intent is meant just by looking mm -hmm. at W-I-N-D. Imagine if you were, if you learned, and again, there's neuroplasticity, we learn, you know, we, whether you train as a child or as an, as an, an, adult, an adult, you could develop a flavor for certain sets of words, where even just flashing the word wind uh, or wind, whichever one spelled the same, uh, you, you had kind of a different set of, of, uh, of, of, of tactile responses that would allow you to not have the question because the, all of this is leading to, the reason I turn on closed captioning is because while I don't have a problem hearing, people will often say a sentence that does not make sense until the next sentence is spoken. Mm -hmm. And then I go back and I contextualize it. And uh, I like the, the, the superpower that closed captioning gives me of knowing exactly that this is a crazily spelled character's name or, or what have you. I wonder if there's another modality that can do a similar thing to allow us to process I, faster. I, I, think, I think it's a very interesting idea. And I've been looking at, I was going back and reading some Edward Tufte and stuff and some of the stuff that he was a guy that wrote like the book Visual Explanations and was really good at how do you convey information. Because I was fascinated by, he had a thing called spark lines, which was basically like how to put like little graphs in a line of text, that their, their information. You now you look at emoji and that was a thing I was thinking about was like if you replace because you say wind and wind if like if for words that might be hard to know the difference on you know could you insert emoji could you do that because I've made the argument like slack is actually a system for communicating with emoji the text is just the metadata and if you I I, you know, I couldn't agree more as a matter of fact um, I would I at the beginning of emoji culture was very against it, but it's like, man, it, something as simple as that must be nice is very different if it has a laughing, crying emoji after it versus mm -hmm. a furious, angry, devil horned emoji after it. I think I, and I, I never thought I'd be the guy to say it, but I think emojis have done more to make a superior form of conversation possible in, 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 here in well, America. Well, yeah, I mean, it the, the line I've always had is that uh, the internet is where context goes to die, uh, and this is where you find yourself, uh, uh, you know, getting into flame wars or 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 being upset about an email or something that you receive because you are always going to read it in the mood that you are in right now. And so, if you're in a great mood, then great. If you're in a bad mood, then uh, you you might be furious about something that just came through. But if you have an emoji, especially if you're trying to be sarcastic or something like that, like boy, how does that help you? Yeah, and it's it's just to be able to acknowledge, hey, this is cool, I like this, or a message received is is helpful. Uh, so I think that yeah, I think there could be a lot of ways we could go into it. I'll, and I'll do I'll, I want to I'll explain some interesting stuff that uh, Microsoft has done with visually impaired people in a second. But uh, things one is uh, I if anybody's curious of trying this, there is if you want to try the word chunking. One of the one of the people who's implemented this, there's a thing called Phrase Reader. If you go to phrasereader.com. A guy, named Dave, a guy named David Butler independently came up with this outside of that research study, and he built, he's got a reading course, which I haven't done, but I have, he has a book that's on Amazon, which I've actually read the book, and he's got some, you know, some nice points about this. So Phrase Reader, we're looking at here, is, is one approach towards doing this. Now, he'll break stuff up into like four words, and I found some research that says that like three words is probably the optimum size. But I found using the chunking method, I can go wait, read at a faster rate than the single word one. Nice. And, hmm. But if you want to try a single word and you have a Kindle Fire, if you have a Kindle Fire tablet, go into an ebook and press Word Runner because Amazon a few years ago added Word Runner oh, wow. into Kindle. And if you want to take a look at that, Bryce is probably pulling this up. It's actually pretty good. Like it's not as good as the chunking method, but. I sat down and I read like a Richard, a 6,000 word Richard Matheson story and like at 600 words per minute or something. So it was just like, it was like in 10 minutes or something. It was just a very, you know, and I remember it. And so you can see, here's what this is. So similar to the other one, but it doesn't use like the red letter or whatever, but uh, it's in, you can pick up a $50 Amazon Fire tablet, open up an ebook and boom, just start reading that. I'll tell you, I, I I might actually try this because I am I am a, 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 a I'm a bad physical reader. 
Like mm-hmm. I, I, I have never been particularly good at it. There are times where I have read more physically than, than I do now. But uh, as soon as audiobooks became a, a standard way to do things, I, I naturally gravitated toward there. And now like, boy, when I have to do the reason why, I mean, aside from doing all the other shit at oh, stuff, uh, all the other stuff at a dog and pony show, uh, uh, Part of the reason why I haven't done another Raise the Dead is because it involves me buying a bunch of old books and physically reading them because they don't have Kindle and they don't have uh, 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 audio books for sure. So, uh, you, you know, one thing that uh, and I don't think I'm talking out of school because I'm, I'm certain he's been fairly open about it. But uh, our friend OMG Chad uh, uh, is dyslexic. And so just as a safety net, he he would highlight entire pages and then have Siri read at the fastest possible speed, but also use his eyes. So he wasn't relying on just the audio modality or the vi- visual modality. And I, for him, uh, he said, I just want to make sure uh, I, I, I'm not yeah. mixing up a word or whatever. Uh, I wonder if uh, to those who are not dyslexic, if it's not a way to ramp up, like I'm going to give it my full attention and it's going to press me. And if I'm afraid that I've missed something, I'll know because I've got it would it would be a worthwhile thing for me to actually just bone up on the concept of reading. I would say. <laughs> yeah, well, there there's uh, um, Brian. There's actually some apps that will do that. Well, they'll highlight each word and they'll say it. Like I was looking at to me, it was annoying as all hell. But for other people, it might work. Some people claim some people with dyslex- dyslexia claim that the single word flashing thing helps them because mm. they're just getting that one word and their brain's reconstructing it rather than the visual center of the part of the brain that's putting things together. So anecdotally uh people dyslexia some form dyslexia has different many different forms so some people dyslexia say that works but yeah justin i would say that like you know i would say like pick up one of the if you want to just go look at any any quick 30 minute tutorial on like on speed good reading speed and, reading yeah. and not yeah and like the basic thing comes down to is like using like the pen or the pencil to like is to just learn to like go across yeah. you know just like just to do that looking at the word groupings it's, and keeping it, it's the pace it's a bit like having a uh, uh, a a pace runner like uh, uh if 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 you've done long distance running whether you choose a fast pace runner or a slow pace runner you don't subjectively really notice whether you're running extra fast or slow but it well, does affect your outcome and one of the ways to to that example is either if you're using the digital thing like Word Runner and the Kindle, or you're trying to do this in a book. One of the p- things people tell you when you first do it: take a book you already know, but go too fast. Go yeah. too fast. And then if you go really, really fast, and you're trying to get your brain is going to try to really stretch to keep up. Then when you bump down a bit, oh my God, you're you're like if you go like 700 words per minute, your brain will go, eh, and then you go to 500. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you this much, uh, uh, tying back to World's Greatest Con Season 2, there was some moment, uh, the very first episode is about fame and shame, and I realized that I remembered most of uh, John Ronson's book, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, and I remember thinking, uh, uh, oh, I know there's one or two really good stories in there, I just don't know which one, but because I had fully read the entire book uh, from beginning to end once before, and because I knew I was scrubbing to get one particular vignette to to think about in the context of this other story, uh, I went faster than I normally would, a full two x, and uh, it was remarkable. I, re- I read the entire book in a in a, a, a day, and I was astounded at how many of the vignettes I could now accurately tell uh, the entire story with with an increased level of fidelity than than right right after the first time I had read it. Hmm. Yeah, I've been experimenting with working with having access to really powerful language models like gpt3 and or variants of that is taking text put it in there and say write it write uh, a summary of this and then either reading the summary first or after and then reading the text and watching retention go up go because all of a sudden i'm like oh i know this is a character name i know this i'm not seeing the name for the first time and i understand i'm not lost even just like taking like 2000 words and coming up like four sentences can help you just get like you're not because even you find in reading like the biggest enemy of reading is not paying attention i know when i'm reading i'll just my brain will drift or audiobooks and i think a lot of people have trouble reading as they don't realize like yeah it's because you're wandering you know that's can, mm. can to, I- to be honest that's the thing that i like the most about audiobooks is that if i do zone out 
then I don't feel like I need to go back sometimes. And sometimes with very dense stuff, like I'm just like, hey, look, if I zoned out on that element and if I can pick up about where we are, uh, especially in nonfiction, then I'm just going to keep rolling. Like, like I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm getting more and, and the train just keeps going as opposed to if I zone out reading a physical book, then I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know where I am. I need to figure out now where I was and I'll go back and then I'll zone out and I'll go back. I feel uh, like, no, no. Oh, go I, ahead. I feel like when someone makes um, k- kind of a, uh, an algorithm or a uh, 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 kids in your algorithm, <laughs> kind of a, a, a secular, uh, it's not a good word kids for it, but in your secular. If, if, if you found a, like, well, my uh, algorithms believed in God, a not code language based, something that you could just apply to various software and hardware whatever this is a house you, of algorithms jesus said to the money changers <laughs> you like you could really like open up um a lot of the web a lot of the web is text and images right now um if you like you see on news sites like hey click here to listen to this article and if it looked better or was better designed i would use it more because i I, ha- I do it in the car a lot i have a siri shortcut that says uh I, I'm on a web page. Please just read this web page to me. And Siri does it. Um, and I think the more that that becomes opened up of uh, like text to speech, like uh, text examination, parsing, um, noticing when there are weird, strange words, character names, or invented words, I, I bet that there's there we have we, we're very close to a one click like hey uh, accessibility please um, kind of universally i agree i think that the i think that things like the spritz and those methods didn't catch on as much was uh for some people use them because they could use if you know what a browser extension is congratulations put yourself into a very rare group of people who actually know how to use them and install them uh but i think that part of it was integrating it was challenging like we didn't have like a really sort of killer way and like if you pointed out to a lot of these a lot of websites will have like oh here's the audio version just click it and it's like yeah but i'm in front of my computer reading right now if i was in an audio mode or an audio app and i was able to surf and find these things i would probably be more likely to listen to it but kind of just the last thing i want is to blast some audio in the middle of, of doing that i think i think there could be a lot a lot to go i'm i'm personally interested in maybe trying to create because I've been I've been playing around with a better method of doing blocks after reading you know that paper from 1982 and reading some other stuff on visualization, and I'm interested in maybe just making like a, just an open source like library that people can implement and say here just put this into here and press a button and now you can speed read this at this level. Yeah. Uh, but because you look love... at like reader mode or any of these other things that are like built into the yeah. in into the software that it, you know yeah. it, it it can get out of the extension space and into yeah, you know. there's a lot of good open source. Like I had, I sent you a link to an open source JavaScript thing that's for dropping stuff in and some of these things. And I, I'm like, like I think the block method is the next way to go. Um, but my challenge to anybody listening to this who has an a Kindle Fire that can do Word Runner, try it. Let us know what you think. Tell us what your words per minute are. Just spend 20 minutes, whatever. Try reading at different speeds. See if you like it, and let us know what you think about it. Because I'm very curious to see what other people think about this. Uh, and where would people send this to? Oh, right. uh, send this into our email. Uh, you can send it to neshcom at gmail. Actually, put weird things in the subject line or check the show notes. Uh, yeah, and if, if you have any longer but, but read that thoughts really on fast. This, yeah, and if you have any longer notes too, if anybody wants just amain at gmail.com, just shoot me an email. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear. So mm-hmm. amain at gmail. Like, and if, if anybody's really having a bad time with it, I need you to send it to schwood at gmail. Uh, no, stop, stop. <laughs> If you get headaches, experience nausea, disorientation, yeah. or some other features, you know, mm-hmm. please notify. Just call Justin at <laughs> 512. 954-895-5665. Uh, That's a Google voice number, right? Uh, Probably. Unless I screwed up. Unless it's a poor woman in Hialeah somewhere. Hello. Yeah. You know what's interesting is we've talked about this as far as reading comprehension for nonfiction or, or article discourse, but... I almost, this is putting me in a painful place of reflection of wondering as anti-spoiler as I like to be for myself, not for everyone else, uh, (laughs) only for me, not for thee. um, I, I have to wonder if there's maybe a benefit to 
knowing the general shape of a story before you go in, because like uh, much like a, 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 a learning phonetics versus whole word reading, uh, with phonetics, it, it, you have to be very laborious, going sound syllable by syllable. But if you know this is a Marvel movie, then there are certain things you can go ahead and write off. Like this is not going to be a real life political drama that's based on Abraham Lincoln in the 1800s. Yeah. So as a result, the moment you see somebody with an Abraham looking hat, you're not going to be thinking, "Ooh, is that Abraham Lincoln?" So, so. Uh, I, I, I wonder. I wonder where the limits are in terms, specifically because uh, I, I've been very tight-lipped about a movie that Justin saw, yeah. and um, and part of the charm of the movie was knowing that it could go anywhere. But also, I at least knew a little bit of something going into it, and it the movie very much pretends to be one thing at the beginning, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that every single narrative piece of fiction benefits from knowing nothing i think well to me there's uh my personal taste on this is that there's kind of a half-life to it where it's like if if i really want to see something i will make an effort to go and see it if if it's on the interest list then i'll be like well you know if we got a free day we got some free time if ashley's into it blah, 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 right uh and then at that point it's like all right uh, 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 if it goes for longer and longer and longer, then I feel like my tolerance for somebody talking me into the movie theater is is bigger, right? Like, uh, uh, I think, um, I forget if it was if one of the two of you, that uh, uh, when uh, the the Split movie came out, that was Andrew. That was the example, yeah. That was Andrew, yeah. And, and it was like, no, there is a very big thing for which you are going to very much like, and it happens at the end, and you should go see it. It's better than you might think. And also, there's this other thing that it's like, oh, okay. Well, well, and, and well like, I guess I need to go I see I literally it. told you. I yeah. literally said, I had to tell you. I'm like, do you have any No, you're not going to see it. All right, can I, I'm going to tell you one thing that will make you want to see it. Yeah. And then, and then I'm like, it's blankety blank. And you're like, Oh, I'm going to go see it <laughs> no, today. See it. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas on the flip side, uh, I received a text message at 2 p.m. from Justin Robert Young that said, this is your one friend warning to see. I'm sorry to bother you right now before you hear another word about it. And by 3.30, I was alone in a movie theater and uh, experiencing an, a, a deeply disturbing, artistic, wonderful achievement uh, that made me think a lot uh, and surprised me in Let's just say there are big surprises big, in that movie. Big surprises. <laughs> big surprises. Um, but 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 I do feel and meanwhile, Army Hammer's the least weird part of that movie, <laughs> and that's saying something. But there's also I I appreciate when somebody maybe shapes a little bit of it where they say, "Hey, as the father of three girls, and somebody who knows about the tech industry, I really think you'll like blank." I I'm I just realized I'm thinking about a specific series <laughs> that, that Bryce hates. Um, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no, but now everyone else knows. But 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 that was just enough of a framework that yeah. I think I got more out of it uh, uh, for for knowing a little bit. I think that there is look. There's the, we all have to make conscious decisions to to make to seek content. So whatever talks you talks you on in, it's a way to go. It's yep. all point of trailers, right? Yeah. yeah, but but we've talked before. Uh, like even trailers have changed because trailers used to be much more descriptive. Yeah. They used to be longer and they used to tell you what was going to happen in the movie. They used to literally begin with in a world where these are the rules of the world. <laughs> and and nowadays we get trailers and even teasers that intentionally don't tell you the plot, especially for these Marvel things. They're just here are the people who are in them. Here are some of the effects. You will. It doesn't matter what the conflict is. Come and buy your. Popcorn. And we've talked uh, about. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I think that oftentimes, bad movies have those trailers. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. really good movies have a, a more descriptive trailer. It's well, like, it's tough. Like for example, the entire marketing campaign for The Matrix was "What is the Matrix?" and they absolutely refused to let you peek behind the curtain. And I would say that my experience was was positively shaped by that. Same thing with uh, Vanilla Sky. I don't know they that that first on... Matrix trailer. I still remember where I was when I saw it because it was so awesome. Oh yeah, it, but but it at least disclosed some kind of kung fu and it was like yeah, yeah. there's a crazy world and this uh, Keanu Reeves kicks ass in it. I yeah. was like, yeah, I'm here for that. 
But, but but then like Vanilla Sky, uh, all of the marketing was only Tom Cruise's face for a, a very deliberate reason. Uh, uh, was it bad? Oh uh, it no move? no because or, because they wanted. Are we, are we talking about the the, the posters? The posters. And okay. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, I I, don't, I remember the, the 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 trailer for that. You know, was like, oh, here's a kooky, crazy I mean, dream on, world. On the flip like, side, oh. there's a uh, uh, the uh, uh, what was the Jordan Peele movie? Yeah, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, not us. Um, uh, before that, uh, the, get the, out. the breakout, get out, get out. Yes. Yeah. We're like, quite trailer, literally, it's the whole, whole movie, movie, including all the twists, including the happy ending at the end. Yeah. It's, and like, I, I don't know, man, like I want a trailer to tell me something. I want to know what the problem of the movie is. I personally like, I like to know that there's a conflict. You are aware that a lot of movies still aren't aware of what the conflict is by the time that yeah. you've watched the entirety of it. I mean, that's, yeah. that's ultimately the problem is that the reason why I think good movies tend to have exciting trailers is because the movie itself knows what it's about. And so you can market a thing that is exciting about it, be it the conflict or a performance or, or something like that. Like you, it, it knows what it's about. Unfortunately, all movies are not made equal and some of them are just straight out slapdash messes. And so you get a bunch of random flashing things, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in the trailer. Slowed down versions of songs. Now. So speaking of, uh, oh, I started on joke. <laughs> speaking of, uh, Marvel movies released this week. Uh, did anybody see anything? <laughs> do we want to do spoiler things for this? I are we are we spoiling? I'm being spoiled. I haven't seen it, but I have you ain't good, seen I have it? a good idea of what goes on in that movie. Man, there's it's it's multiverse, man. Is it madness? It's madness, man. <laughs> it's madness. It's uh, okay, <laughs> we we do have to set our outs because I know that uh, Andrea has a hard out and oh, I have yes. to go pick someone up from the airport. So, uh, do we want to do picks or what are we feeling? Yeah, yeah let's do picks. Let's do picks. Uh, uh, hey, look, man. Uh, there's a movie in theaters that involves the multiverse <laughs> and it's the greatest movie I've seen in a while. And it's called, uh, uh, every, everything, thing, everywhere, everywhere, all, all at, at once. once. Mm -hmm. If it you is. have to see one action adventure multiverse themed movie this year, make sure it's, it's everything, everywhere, uh, all I, at once. Um, it's so creative. It is so grounded in its emotion, um, and it is to me a a masterclass in everything mattering. Ev and this this movie's got some things. I, I, everything, everything has an arc. Everything matters. Things that you thought were jokes come back and get results. It, get it, ends it, or. There's, I, it's there is, not there is one, a story. No I'm certain it's too long, but if with a gun to my head, I wouldn't tell you what frame to cut. <laughs> I, I will <laughs> like, say, I will say, yeah. The pacing is the way I would describe it is uh, uh, imagine you go to the best meal of your life, and it's like this, like you know, a, a ten course meal or something, and you get to course ten, and then they're like, there are two surprise courses, and then oh. they bring out the eleventh course. I'm like, oh, just a a little bit. Mm. And you're like, oh my god, that's delicious! And you wind up eating that. <laughs> you wind up eating the next one. It's like, look, it, it is, it is probably overstuffed, but, but, uh, uh, uh boy, um, when you are moving creative tonnage like that, uh, I, I am all the way willing to, uh, uh, uh to, to, uh, to, to sit there for it. Uh, exceptional. Yeah. Uh, uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Excellent. Uh, I've got a pick. This oh. is this is a strange one. Um, yeah. are Doctor you, Strange one. <laughs> are are you are Doctor any of the strange three and the of multiverse of madness is Bryce's pick? <laughs> Bryce, what was your favorite character? Uh, are you are you guys familiar with the USCSB? No, her name was America Travis. <laughs> <laughs> the the USCSB. I found this on YouTube the other night, um, and it's very strange. It is the Chemical Safety Board. Um, it is an American agency. What the hell do you get up to when you're on your off hours? The and they have safety board. They have a YouTube channel that is maybe the greatest thing I've ever seen. It is like. Is it just about how everything could kill you? No, it is like true crime for real industrial accidents. Oh my goodness. And they like 
and they get stuff animated because they do go and investigate these issues and they're like hey like yeah you need to be careful of using heat in a contained space you need this to do is this like that. this is like this is like brian got in trouble for a modern rogue shoot that went out of control and the judge is like i sentence you to work for this government bureau doing crazy experiments dun, 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 dun. our new tv series oh this my god is it. Uh, uh also uh, shockingly close to the reality i, uh, I don't oh know oh my god these little sim men are are about to all die oh yes. about to all die in this in this and, chemical accident and it's um it is delivered skip right to the death uh, they the explosion happens a couple of times. They uh they they t- like they are. Uh, this is an autopsy of a real thing that happened. Oh, no. This chemical plant really did. These are real people. Uh, they I mean, yes, but they the, represent the real people. They represent yes. real yes. people. Um, ah! and t- oh, and then there are there's real- a real. Oh my god, a real person well, just popped and, up and, and, and it startled me. And, uh, there there are all sorts of terrifying industrial stories of somebody thinking. Let's say there's a lot of argon or or nitrogen or whatever, where it's like. Um, you, you think, well, I'll just run in and flip this switch mm-hmm. and, and, you know, you, you take three or four steps and because you're inhaling pure nitrogen, you, you perceive that it's fine. It's air because you're not, uh, uh, what you experience is holding your breath is actually a buildup of CO2. And then just, you make it four or five steps and then you're just dead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is. And so it's, a lot of this is delivered pretty <gasps> so there is a big like explosion a lot of it is a little reminiscent of do you remember when they were doing those uh 3d animated skits for the major the news? news yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're oh lo-fi. yeah the yeah. the taiwanese or korean I, I think they were singaporean thing. yeah yeah singaporean news that was it um and so there's a little bit of that but it is delivered very soberly it is it is not sensationalized these are investigators who are explaining the incident and you'll learn a little bit about like hey you know what maybe i won't use a heat gun on on mm. epoxy maybe i will uh, look for a heating sober whatever. examinations of chemical explosions and disasters it's great it's, what it's Bryce all of just the co- watches <laughs> all night long and some people are into true crime this is these are like accidents i mean yeah uh, prob- you're probably, sick, probably you're more. No, no, I, I'm on board <laughs> with this. I think this is. This is no. uh, yeah. not doing the boy. Civic Stop duty. coddling him. It's well, like a, he's not. He, sh- he shouldn't be worried about hitchhikers. He should be worried been, about this. I should have been watching Doctor Strange. I like that all of the comments are like, "I love your videos," and I hate when I find out there's a new one because you had to make one. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, so so it's USCSB? <laughs> yeah, C- USCSB. Uh, they're on YouTube. Um, <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, that's some serious life sa- life-saving stuff. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Um, Hi, I'm Justin. I played Justin on the, the <laughs> pick segment. Um, I, I was just kidding. You should all watch it and learn. <laughs> there he <laughs> uh, I got a pick. It's called... Giving up on fiction for a little bit and getting back to nonfiction. Uh, my audible cue is the longest chain of unspent uh, credits I've had ever, ever, full stop. Like I'm over 30 unspent credits. And I realized it's because I've been doing all this Brandon Sanderson fantasy stuff that, and, and you, you hit one pothole and you're like, well, I'll just get back to it. I'll get back to it. And then I realized six months has passed and all I've been doing is listening to podcasts. And I was like, you know what? I'm officially going to allow myself to get back to this, this epic fantasy. And instead I'm just going to do nonfiction for a bit. Loving it. Uh, I think I had previously talked about the guy who wrote, um, the, the madness of crowds talking about uh, social media behavior. He's got a new one that uh, uh, it, it, I, I, I guess is political. I don't know. But uh, he mm-hmm. makes a very strong case that, who oh boy, if there's one group that the whole world is allowed to pick on, it's uh, the West. Um, it's it's the, uh, uh, the most pluralistic. Uh, 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 I'll let him make his own case. But but I am. Really fascinated uh, by the case after case after case of uh, on the global stage, how everybody in authoritarian regimes loves to say, at least we're not racist like America. Uh, well, <laughs> it's, it's, the West, Brian, were the only ones with the agency, well, as far as I understand. It, yeah. It, and it, Tupac. I mean, I, I mean, that's that's sort of the, the point is that uh, 
uh, oh, we don't have racism here. And we're like, is that because one team won? <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and now racism is not a problem. Uh, but but it's not all about racism. It's about um, uh, just uh, uh, the marketplace of ideas and uh, about like how the UK uh, dismantled its own empire and that's not good enough. Now they have to forever and ever and ever hear about uh, how, yeah, but you used to have an empire. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, it, it's a little bit of food for thought that I'm enjoying. That's unfair. Also, I want to invite all of you to my 4th of July party. <laughs> <laughs> Taking place in Puerto Rico. Yup. <laughs> Sounds complicated. Uh, Andrew, you got a pick? I have a pick. And uh, yeah, go. If you have a Kindle Fire tablet, try Word Runner. Try okay. it. Or phrasereader.com if you want to try that method. And then I'll be looking out to see if there's some other stuff out there. But I'm just curious to see what people think and their input on it. Nice. It's been weird. Speaking of Puerto Rico, uh, it just reminds me the, the, the Seinfeld episode where Kramer does the AIDS walk. Yes. And doesn't want to wear the ribbon. Yes. It, and and you think about today, like how extreme of a statement that would be of like, I support this. I'm for you. I'm here. You, I just don't want to do the signal, you know, and <laughs> just, yeah, that one. That and then the Puerto I, Rican I, day parade. That Puerto was, Rican day parade is yeah. another one. Yeah. Well, that's where he accidentally lights the Puerto Rican flag, flag on fire. fire. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would not do that. That seems like a mistake. Well, it was an accident. It was an accident. They should, there should just be a like video that, autopsy. On just like that <laughs> one episode a, from uh, the US comedy S store. <laughs> <laughs> the US uh, uh, CPS, yeah. is that C what it is? No. CSB. CSB. They yeah. have, they have. Okay. Where the hell did you find that? It was in my recommendation. It's amazing. Really? Weirdo. It yeah. looks amazing. And I, I can't wait to What I love in. is every video begins with like this big motion graphic coming in that you can't read at all. <laughs> and then it just disappears. Um, yeah. It's, I don't know. All right. Uh, we want to okay. jump into after things. Uh, yeah, we can jump right into after What's things. What's uh, what? What are the hard outs here? I, no. I I should be on the road in fifteen minutes. Andrew, how long do you have? I got uh twelve fifty five. Uh, okay, so that's about uh. Okay. It's like ten minutes. Yeah. Ten. Oh, ten, ten minutes. That's like ten or fifteen minutes or so. Uh, it's something like that. My uh, numbers. Okay. I mean, well, we could keep saying, is it 15 minutes or so for another 15 let's minutes? Go. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get us ready to go. Let's start after things in three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Yo. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy. And Mr. Circus Wrangler extraordinaire keeps the show running, the conductor, the okay. maestro. Oh, the director. Andrew May. <laughs> May. <laughs> uh, Bryce Castillo. Hola. Hello, everybody. Uh, gentlemen, let's talk about some after things. In the previous episode of Weird Things, I talked a bit about uh, some different apps and techniques for speed reading. And every time that conversation comes up, if it's on a Reddit forum or Hacker News, you'll get the what about just enjoying something? What's wrong with that? Yeah. You know, or why does yeah. everybody have to do this? Which is <laughs> why do you have to overclock life, my guy? It's, why don't you smell the roses? It's kind of like that thing. Um, oh, 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 oh! I lost it. Seinfeld. It's kind of like Seinfeld. No, I lost it. <laughs> Kind of uh, like that thing. I mean, the, the answer, of course, is because not everything is meant to be savored. If I'm reading a book on how to do a magic trick and I need to know, you know, my third phalange down, pinky break, cut, uh, mm -hmm. double transfer, whatever, it's like it's I, I'm not going to have a better time for contemplating the poetry of how they phrase that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and some people want to read stuff fast. I don't know. Like, it's like, like, why, why do we need running? Well, uh, walking why? works just fine. Let's get a faster why horse. Why don't you retire to your study and your smoking jacket and your glass of port and enjoy your leather-bound edition? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Have your houseboy bring you vittles. It's, yes. it's like that idea of, of uh, you know, oh, the kids have it so easy. It's like yeah. that's the point of human 
technologies that is, that to is, make life easier. Yeah, that is literal progress. <laughs> yeah. It is the point that the next generation has it easier than the generation yeah, I like, before. I like, is there a camp that's, we need, well, there is sort of, kind of the, we need to do the opposite, you know? Like, let's get rid of, like, refrigerated goods and let's get rid of all these things that made your life, you know, socks. Yeah, blisters. I don't know. A little blister never hurt anybody. Let's yeah. get rid of socks. Let's what? let's de-evolve. Why all do you need shoes? Like better. Here are these big banana leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's it's funny. Uh, uh, Sam Harris uh, in one of his essays talks about the fact that um, uh, uh, objectively the two scenarios are almost the same, and yet people, humans, wealthy humans, will pay $10,000 for the privilege of a week-long uh, silent meditation retreat where they are not allowed to see or communicate with another living soul and live in a cave. And yet, um, that objectively, the same thing under a different circumstance, no lie, a war crime per uh, 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 Amnesty International. And uh, the, the big difference is just where your head is at, uh, so to speak, for well, either of those. Agency, like I would assume. Sex <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Brian, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's like sex and rape. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, uh, well, uh, uh, and that's when I stopped talking. <laughs> but, uh, Three, four, uh, and... <laughs> Uh, uh, but no, I, I think your 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 point being that like there is obviously something profound there, uh, uh, like to the point where I either it is a a tremendous punishment or it is something for which you are spending your own wealth so you can achieve. Uh, uh, but that is uh, the the variable of exactly how profound you want it to be or or it is 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 literally 180 right well and and you guys are 100 percent right when you say the difference of course is agency but uh, uh yeah 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 no, i agree i think that is it is a uh, things that why you can't not all things can be evaluated purely from objective like well person a and person b you know, I remember, this is a dumb analogy, but I remember years ago, Val Kilmer was on the set of The Saint, and he was talking about, Val Kilmer is talking about the sweater that he uses, and he was like, I love this sweater, because I feel like you could be a billionaire or a poet with no money, and you would wear the sweater. <laughs> and I'm like, huh, there's a lot of insight into Val Kilmer right there about why he <laughs> likes this piece of clothing was because, like, it, it says something that you couldn't tell if that person was rich or a poet, and they would wear the same sweater. Yeah, mm. <laughs> and I guess I guess the same thing. Like, imagine you're at university, and one class of people uh, uh, sit with the course materials on a leather-bound chair uh, in a, in a pipe off to the side, where they have to read everything f uh, from a paper volume. Whereas the other side get to watch a live lecture and have interactive VR. Goggle like like one of those sounds like like uh, well clearly that's the the good one and the other one is bad but again just context you, you know what was an interesting idea I saw uh, over the past week was like when when I came up in in grade school I remember we got a computer lab in second or third grade and yeah. it was like oh my god there's kid pics in Oregon Trail uh, oh. Yeah, that was the name of the software. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say because your version of Oregon Trail was a lot different. Uh -oh. Mine just had rifles and buffalo meat. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Did you have to trade those at the post, or? But uh, now, like you, there, like, the feds have raided the Chattanooga. <laughs> But like kids, kid picks have been discovered. Kids are coming up uh, comfortable <laughs> typing and using keyboards. Um, and if there, there's an, there was an idea that if we, if we gave kids a coding uh, class or a coding section, you know, throughout grade school, they would like coding would probably stop being a like skilled. Uh, a, a skilled profession like a type being a typist used to be like oh, you were the one who used to who could work the keyboard very well and now everybody can do that um and now there's like a lot of different coding languages and stuff but i think if if we if if i think the world can be very different in 12 years if kids know principles of coding and 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 writing software uh and in, indeed they do as a matter of fact uh, a preemptive pick is uh watching cali at the age of nine 
uh, in her doing a, a scratch from MIT where she's working with coding blocks and stuff. Uh, she uh, plays Animal Jam, which is a highly supervised uh, kid safe environment uh, MMO. Uh, and there's all these games within games. I, I'm not going to lie. On Saturday, they were, she, she was showing off this game, and I'm like, oh, it's a tower defense game. And then you're like, yeah, I just haven't been able to finish this one on hard mode. And I'm like, hey, I got you, kid. And then uh, all of a sudden, there were too many bugs, uh, and, and I lost. So I was like, well, let me try it again. Let me try it again. I'll be damned if I didn't spend four hours playing the Animal Jam tower defense game yesterday, and I still have yet to get a perfect score on that son of a gun. Uh. I'm trying strategy after strategy, trying to crack this thing. <laughs> the whole family is now in on it. We all gather around playing it, and, and uh. that is not the, the type of experience. I was expecting from a nine-year-old. Yeah. So Kobayashi Maru, Brian, you know what the answer <laughs> That's it. is. Yeah. Uh, Scratch is pretty neat. Scratch now uses the uh, the Google Blockly library, which is this plug-and-play library for building. Basically, you can use that to like build different kinds of software applications. And if you work with Arduino or a lot of things, they use that, which is great. Uh, but back into the whole the the information sort of processing thing. Um, have you guys, you guys familiar with Blinkist? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. What do you, what do you, so Blinkist, those uh, you uh, don't know. Uh, Blinkist does, uh, summaries. They, uh, yeah. uh I, 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 uh, uh, disclosure sponsor, oh. um, the, uh, uh, they, they do a lot of summaries of stuff, which, which I find them, uh, much more valuable for me personally as, uh, ways to revisit things that I've already read. Uh, uh, so, uh, I don't think that anything I've done has been sponsored by Blinkist. Uh, uh, I will say it is a very, very smart company who realized that most nonfiction books have about four or five good chapters, and the rest <laughs> of them are pointless musings of how their first television was a black and white television, and their dog had a cow named Bessie, and that's mm -hmm. really tied into the thing that they're going to do. And so if you could just boil down those four or five really good chapters into bite-sized pieces, then, man, is that valuable, and you don't have to read about the stupid television. <laughs> What has been, are any of you subscribers or use it? Uh, I, I have used it. Uh, uh, I don't think my account is currently active. Justin? I have not, no. no. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious because it is one of these things where at first as an author, you're like, oh, but everything you just said is, is true. Like nonfiction books. My favorite series was this series, the Science Master series, where they would get accomplished writers to basically write 160 word books. 160 word books. That'd be 160 page books. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's my plan, by the way. I'm going to call that. But uh, I love that. That was my introduction to Richard Dawkins and Daniel Dennett, was by reading these uh, River Out of Eden. Um, uh, Di Daniel Dennett's Kinds of Minds is one of my favorite books ever about just understanding how, you know, consciousness works. River Out of Eden was a really good introduction to Richard Dawkins' approach to evolution and meme theory and all that. So I really really liked it series like i really liked that because i thought you know there's something there's important ideas but most big books don't get read you know i remember you'll uh, there was a big book one of these kind of anti-capitalism books that everybody talked about and then amazon released the kindle data on it and the number of people like most no, almost nobody got past like 30 percent of it oh wow and like like that was a very interesting sort of thing to say oh this best-selling book and it's like yeah, the, probably the first 80 pages were interesting. And, and that is, I would have thought by now we would have seen, and Amazon's tried a bit with doing Amazon singles and shorter form content. Yeah. But I think the form, different form content has lived on in different other mediums, YouTube videos and podcasts, and not so much in the book. The book seems still resistant towards... Although I would say the independent market's huge because, like, I do buy a bunch of these indie books people write that are 100 pages, 120 pages, but you don't yeah, I, hear about. Yeah, I, I think you're right. It, it's probably bigger than it ever has been in the DIY space. Like, there is probably more of these things being sold than there ever than there ever ever have been. But the the ossification or fo fossilization of of uh, the the publishing industry, even even at from the most progressive players, uh. I think is that book, books are ooh, strong, big, 
you want uh, 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 to buy a big old book, and, and so it's got to be X amount of pages. Hey, take it from me, Ed Book. Whether or not you want to learn a thing or balance a table, books are where it's at. They're physical objects. They come in different different sizes and everything. It's me, Ed Books. Hi, I'm Digital Ed Books. You can also get e-books. <laughs> get out of Me- here, Ed. Mecca uh, Ed Books. I told, you, I told you at the great visiting. I didn't ever want to see you again. I will be your death. I just hope our, our Audible book doesn't show up. <laughs> Oh, good, he didn't. <laughs> I'm looking at, like... Bad audible books have left. <laughs> Steven Pinker is an amazing writer, right? I love Steven Pinker's approach towards stuff. His... I read Blank Slate. I read that book end-to-end because it was just filled with so much good stuff. But he's got a lot of other stuff like, oh, I'll get this, I'll get this, I'll get this. And I'm not telling him he needs to do anything differently. I'm just saying that if I lived in a multiverse where there was a Steven Pinker who was churning out 180 page books periodically, um, I'd be reading a lot of those. Yeah, you know, and and you got to wonder is is a 180 page book a few magazine features what? or 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 something like that? Like there's there's we're seeing probably the greatest strataing that we have ever seen in terms of a presentation of the written word from the smallest tweet to uh you know the longest kind of books there there has never been more ways that we can get them you know at any time delivery method at any level of maturation at any level of 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 of, of length um but that is still fairly new right you know there's there's not a a, a ton you know even if you just look at the writing that has been uh, uh, that has come out of the Substack revolution, it, it's the most exciting time for online and new media content, in my view, since blogs. Like not since the early aughts, when when you had a lot of new, really exciting voices that were uh, uh, pumping stuff out on, on a regular basis. The, the Substack stuff now is just it's insane. The level of of of, of quality of content. Uh, uh, that is that is coming out of there with with kind of newsletters having a heyday is is great, but also it's like where is that if we're going to put in 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 the the from smallest to largest uh, or or from most mature to least mature, and I, I mean that in terms of time taken to write it, uh, uh, where where does the newsletter go? It's certainly somewhere between you know the the uh, uh, three hundred and fifty page magnum opus nonfiction book and the the you know. Who farted tweet? Mm. Uh, I, I I do think it's worth pointing out that uh, actually that reminds me of a tweet group. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 if I can do a counter argument, like I think you're a hundred percent right that uh, a lot of successful nonfiction is filled with a little bit of uh, uh, unnecessary stuff that can be cut. But for example, uh, Stephen Pinker's Better Angels of Our Nature, I think it's like six hundred pages or something like that. Um, it. I will never know how profound a book that would be to me if he didn't spend a laborious and insanely painful first hundred pages vividly and graphically drawing a picture of what passed for common entertainment in the 1600s. Um, oh, I, I... And, 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 and yes, I got the point after the first three examples of torture or public execution, but I don't know that I really would have felt it Unless he had gone I, on for seventy more pages, and I and I would not, and I I will argue that every single book he's written should exist in the form that it is. Like I yeah. said, like blank, and and I because I even had a discussion with just somebody made like ah, oh, blank slate was such and such, that was too long, and I'm like I'm like no, like for me, blank slate wasn't because I was I I came from a different point of view, and he made the case, and he really made the case, and he had enough example and like that the the full size book. You know, Guns, Germs, and Steel, uh, even though I disagree, and I think later on we found that a lot of that doesn't hold up, but as a as his Jared Diamond's point of view on how the world works was a very interesting, those those are worth it. Uh, Blind Watchmaker, I, I wouldn't change the size of that, but the fact that Richard Dawkins also wrote that book, River Out of Eden, is how I got to Blind Watchmaker. It's how I got to those other bigger ideas, because I found this concise 180-page thing, thing that got me thinking about it, I'm like, oh... And we talked about before about getting primed for stuff. This made me want to take on this other book. Yeah, I, th- I think that's part of what I like about uh, Blinkist as a parallel, or as we used to think of them, Cliff's Notes or whatever, uh, parallel summary entities that are not meant to 
fully replace the the original thing. Um, but stuff to get you started. Like or, or, that's that's a yeah. big deal. Like honestly, in media, is like how do you get someone started on something that is a big commitment? Like an eight hundred page book just doesn't matter how good it is. There are going to be some people who say eight hundred eighty seven pages is too many for me. I won't read it. Um, is that how long Better Angels is? That's what Amazon says. Oh my god, uh, I, I believe it. It's very yeah. long. <laughs> and like you have to get people like that's we we talk about spoilers a lot. Is like you kind of do need to give someone a little bit of salt and pepper to just realize like, hey, oh, actually there are there's grit here, there's texture, and you can uh, you could find something here. Um, but and, where do you? Where, and where's... On, on the flip side, you have uh, <laughs> men are from Mars, women are from Venus. A book where uh, I haven't read it, but I assume that. Just by saying the title, I've given you the majority of the content in there. Yep. Everyone's from space. <laughs> we are all star stuff. <laughs> uh, Want to jump into picks? Uh, yeah. No. I, uh, 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 I, now I want to go back and read Better Angels of Our Nature. That, that was great. <laughs> Actually, uh, my pick will be uh, uh, Animal Jam, the tower defense game, <laughs> because I, I need to crush it. <laughs> um. Uh, uh, I think I talked about this a while ago, but Not Words, the game Not Words, uh, K N O T words on uh, the iPhone and stuff, is very good. I'm still playing it. Um, it's like a crosswordy type game, so check it out. It's Ooh. from the guy who did Spell Tower. Ooh, good stuff. Uh, the Pentaveret <laughs> is a show on Netflix starring Mike Myers and Mike Myers and Mike Myers and okay. Mike Myers and Mike Myers, oh. and Mike Myers and Mike Myers and Mike Myers and hmm. Mike Myers. Uh, look, Awful. it's it it ain't it ain't good. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but if you like Mike Myers, there hadn't been a lot of Mike Myers around. So uh, uh, uh I would say this is for super fans only. Uh, and I am apparently not a super enough fan. <laughs> and I love Mike Myers. Andrew? Uh, my pick is River Out of Eden Ooh. by Richard Dawkins. Mm. Check it out. And it's, Richard uh, Dawkins. And Richard you've Dawkins. never read a book by Richard Dawkins, read River Out of Eden. Hmm. Uh, there we go. Nice. River Out of Eden. That, that's the book that made me fall in love with the idea of writing smaller books mm. Mm. 192 pages says amazon Woo. and i've and i think that you know he's got like i've mentioned before like uh one of my favorites is profiles of future by arthur c clark which was a book that um ceo of open eye sam altman had recommended we read and you know it's 180 pages there's a bunch of his essays it's great it's just a great collection about the future and this is i've been working on projects and thinking about things from that book a couple weeks ago it's still in my head so nice cool Gentlemen, it's been after. <laughs> All right, good stuff, everybody. We, uh, yeah, we're, we're leaving a little early today. Oop, there, see, even there goes Andrew. We're leaving a little early today so yeah. we can get some other stuff done. But so we can go so watch fun. Doctor Strange again. Yeah. <laughs> There's the, a multiverse. The best multiverse movie with action in it. There's uh, yeah. none better. None have ever been better. That is, doesn't include the Chinese language. Yeah. All right, we'll see you in a few hours, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.